Hi, everyone. Wait, welcome to the Belize Field School information session. We're going to get started now. So we've got in our info session agenda here. We're going to start with some welcome and, in and intros. Uh, we'll be introducing the Maple League staff and uh, different university staff, as well as some past participants. Then we'll proceed with our land acknowledgement and we'll speak about the Global Skills Opportunity Grant that will be funding this opportunity. Next, we'll go over the program details and uh, followed by the eligibility application and selection for the program. And then there will be a question period. So further ado, let's start with some introductions, folks. I'll introduce myself. My name is Nate Taylor. I'm the Education and Abroad Advisor here at St. Francis Xavier University. And um, we'll move on in the order that we see um, the logos displayed. So um, let's move on to folks from Bishops, please. Uh, hello, my name is Simon Daly. I'm a third year sociology student and I came from uh, Bishops University. I have minors in Indigenous Studies and Criminology. Uh, I think that's a good introduction. Thank you, Simon. I don't think we have a Nick here. So anyone else from Bishops? Let's go to Mount Allison, please. Oh, I'm from Bishops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to turn on my mic. Uh, my name is Kadeet Sayeri, and I'm a fourth year marketing and entrepreneurship student. Thank you. I'm also from Bishops, sorry. Uh, my name is Ocean, and I'm a third year sports studies major, and I'm also doing minors in psychology and biology. Thank you. I, I'm from Bishops too, but I, I thought it was just the staff that was going but i'm a i'm a student um in music and drama thanks any other bishops folks if not i think we'll move to robin with mount allison university yeah good evening everyone uh, my name is robin walker i'm the international affairs coordinator at mount allison university um yeah i'll just leave it there i run our exchange programs study abroad programs um, and our uh, English language program here on campus. Thanks for joining tonight. Thank you, Robin. And let's move on. Do we have anyone else from Mount Allison? I don't think so. Oh, we do? Good. Isabella's here, I think. Okay. Yeah, I am. Hi, my name is Isabella. I'm a fourth year English student at Mount A, and I took part in the program last year. Um, Thanks, I'm also, sorry, I'm also from Mount Allison. Um, I'm Kaylee, I'm fourth year um, classics student with a minor in Indigenous Studies at Mount A. Thank you, Kaylee. Last call for Mount Allison folks. Okay, let's move to Acadia, starting with Mike, please. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Holmes. Um, I'm the director of the KD International Department and I also work with our study abroad program. Uh, so that's the reason that I'm involved with this project. Um, very nice to see everybody here tonight and so welcome. Thanks Mike, let's go on to Chelsea. Hi folks, uh, I'm Chelsea Hanoon. I am the coordinator of exchange and study abroad with Acadia University. Anyone else from Acadia joining us today? I don't think so. I would Did we like miss anybody else? <laughs> yeah. And we've had Simon and Isabella who are past um, participants of the Belize Field School introduce themselves. Thanks very much for being here today with us. Um, if that's everyone, oh wait, um, Monica, please go ahead. We don't wanna forget you. Hi, my name is Monica Mitchell. I am coordinator at BU International, uh, Bishops International, and um, Anik and I were both having um, 
technical difficulties and I think she's still having problems getting in. So uh, I apologize for my charging us. No problem. Happy to have you here and hopefully Nick can join us. Okay, I think we're good to move on to the next section. Chelsea, could you please please lead us in a uh, land acknowledgement? Yes. Um, so I'd like to begin by acknowledging that as non-Indigenous administrators of this project that we are continually striving to improve our relationships with First Nations and the traditional lands that we are long-term guests on uh, in Abenaki and Mi'kmaq territories. Uh, within our roles at each of our institutions, we are working to have more open dialogues to uh, help determine meaningful steps that we can take to decolonize our mobility programs. Um, for this program in particular, participating students will be traveling to and within the country now known as Belize. So Belize is located on the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, which is home to Turtle Island, North America's largest indigenous population in the Maya. Uh, the original inhabitants of Belize are the Yucatan, uh, Mopan, and the Kichu. Kichichi, Maya, and I apologize for my pronunciation. I, I need more time to practice. <laughs> but through the, this program, uh, participants will build uh, indigenous knowledge across international borders. Uh, so as you can see on this slide here that I've included a screenshot from nativelands.ca. Uh, so you can see some of the territories um, throughout Belize and the Yucatan um, Peninsula. And I've also included here some questions that you can consider as you're applying um, and leading up to the program uh, to learn and think about um, the land that you'll be traveling on and how it's different from the territories that we are on now. Thank you, Chelsea. I'll just give yourself, give us a moment to read some of these questions, just a few moments, and um, we'll go from there. Okay. I'd like to hand it off to Robin at this point to speak about the Global Skills Opportunity Grant and how we're funding this opportunity for everyone. Sure, thanks Nate. Um, and thanks for the land acknowledgement and uh, also for that slide, Chelsea, I think it was really, uh, yeah, made us reflect or made that everyone reflect um, early on in the journey. Uh, so the, yeah, the Global Skills Opportunity is a, a federally funded, uh, um, program um, that was launched um, back um, in 2020. Um, it was um, came out of the international education strategy, um, the national international education strategy, recognizing that uh, the federal government uh, was invested in um, youth in Canada having uh, more um, global, you know, developing a global outlook and understanding the world outside of Canada's borders um, and how important that is as we um, uh, you know, as, as we um, receive and bring more immigrants and newcomers to Canada. It's also really important for Canadians and um, youth to have international experiences and to um, sort of, uh, yeah, be and learn about other cultures. Um, so uh, the, uh, yeah, back in 2020, just at the time of uh, the COVID, of the start of the pandemic, um, they uh, talked about, um, yeah, they, they did some different ideas in knowing that the world was kind of shut down to travel. Um, but in back in 2021, um, they did decide to go ahead with a, a big, um, uh, a big launch of funding. Um, and so universities in Canada and colleges were able to apply for funding. So um, yeah, we, the Maple League, uh, all four universities came together, the um, Mike and, and Nick and, and Larissa and I, so the four of us from international offices um, at the four Maple League schools came together on a few calls to brainstorm an idea about what we might want to do um, and and really, you know, over the course of a couple of months, we really felt like uh, we wanted to bring our Indigenous students on our campuses together for a short term 
uh, to really learn from one another um, and share with one another, but also to um, have an international experience. Um, so at the time, we were really excited to um, to work with a university um, in Belize, um, and Galen University was on board, um, and so that is how we started to the launch of our uh, of our program. We applied for funding, and we were successful in our um, bid for funding. So now. Um, we started last summer, last spring, and now we have two more years of funding until uh, next spring of 2024. So with the grant, um, students are eligible for up to $10,000. Um, we uh, know from last year from running the program, it doesn't cost $10,000 to, to run the program, but it um, students are eligible for up to $10,000. But just to, um, just in, in, in short, um, really the all of the costs related to this program should are covered, um, and this would include tuition for the course, airfare, accommodation, meals, tr uh, health insurance, in-country transportation, and um, costs related to, we'll talk about it later, a little bit later, but the pre-departure gathering as well. Um, so the only things maybe uh, Simon and Isabella can talk, but I think the really the only things that students uh, paid for were things like um, souvenirs, um, extra kind of, um, yeah, souvenirs and little incidentals. Um, Simon or Isabella, can you think of any other things that you use, you know, you had pocket money um, while you were in Belize pay for? Uh, do you mind if I go first, Isabel? Yeah. Um, one thing that I was very happy for was that we did have a honorarium for food. So there's never any worry about that. And while on the trip, uh, the trip itself, I was able to use the honorarium throughout. And I did bring back a few things which came out of my own pocket. Uh, beyond that, there is nothing I the need for anything. I had everything on hand that I needed and the support network uh, through the Maple League, through Henner, um, for what I needed to be able to be there. Thanks. Isabella, did you have anything to add about costs and things that you, yeah, related to the program? Not really, just a reiteration of what Simon said. I, I brought a bit of personal money to buy some souvenirs, um, but that's about, what came out of my pocket, food and everything like that was uh, was really great. <laughs> By the way, the food was really amazing, but uh, for the financial side of it, it was all taken care of. Super, thanks. Okay, um, let's move on to the schedule for 2023. Program details, so, um, Simon, you're gonna, yeah. You wanna have your hand up to say something? I, I do apologize. I have class starting at 6.30 and I was asked to uh, answer a few quick questions, if that's all right. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. Maybe we can pause and just have a, yeah. If you wanted to reflect or talk about a few, um, you know, learning experiences or takeaways from the program as a past participant, that would be amazing. Uh, the first question I was asked to think about was why you think it is a good idea for students to uh, apply for these trips. And as myself, I was very hesitant to apply. This was a very large step. Uh, I didn't have a passport when I started applying. I didn't have a good support network. I found through the application process, I was able to meet quite a few people. I was able to build a good support network. I was able to expand my own knowledge base and experience just through the application process. And the application process itself, uh, from what I experienced was very easy, it was very non-judgmental, was very caring, was very uh, well done. I didn't feel any stress from applying. And if the worst possible case is they say, yes, you can go to Belize and the best possible case, 
is you go to Belize. I say go for it. It is absolutely worth it. The second question I was asked was, what were your key learnings from this travel? I just to reiterate what we did the first day in our trip to Belize was we visited a local community member, learned about history in the area, how they're revitalizing sports. We went to a woman's uh, center to be able to learn how to create our own uh, tortilla bread, how to uh, work with clay in the traditional manner. Uh, then we went to learn how to write our names in Mayan hieroglyphs and then a coffee plantation. Just in the first day, we did anthropology, we did sociology, we did agriculture, and we did linguistics. Uh, I'm a sociology student with a minor in indigenous studies and criminology. This is very cross-disciplinary. I loved every minute of it. And what I learned about myself was I'm still on my own healing journey. I am still uh, trying to figure out who I am and where my boundaries are. And on this trip, I was in a safe space and I did learn about myself and my boundaries. And it wasn't just about expanding the borders I cross, but expanding my own knowledge base. So I was able to learn quite a bit and I have been able to take some of that back to the courses and to the friends and family I have in bishops. Uh, because my class does start soon, if anybody has any questions for me here, uh, I think this would be a good time. If anyone wants to contact me uh, outside, my email address is uh, sdalei19 at ubishops.ca. If anyone has any questions now, I'm, I'm more than happy to. Thank you so much for sharing. That was really great to hear. So, I mean, could I put your email in the chat? Absolutely. Uh, one thing I do want to make available is uh, my journal entries. Uh, if anyone wants to see what those were like, what they're done, I do know that they're updating the day-to-day uh, -day schedule. Uh, but if anyone wants to see like just my thoughts, my emotions, my views, I'm more than willing to share that. Thanks so much, Simon. Doesn't look sound like anybody's got any questions for you at the moment. So maybe uh, we can uh, sign. You can sign off. But thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Simon. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I do hope uh, that this goes well. Thank. You. Isabella, could we maybe ask you the same two questions? I know I'm. We're putting you on the spot because I did not ask you to prepare those questions. Um, but if you wouldn't mind, maybe just while we're um, yeah, just in between slides, could we ask? Um, yeah, the first question I think Simon was just yeah, what do you recommend or why do you think um, future students should apply to this program? And the second question was just about key learnings um, that you had for from this program this participant last year. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's no problem. Thank you. <laughs> um, I definitely think students should apply um, for just an international experience, quite frankly. Um, I thought it was life changing for me. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to more describe it more than it was life changing, um, but it was a really wonderful experience. Um, and I was able to learn so much um, from a new culture that I had never experienced um but i was also able to learn a lot from my indigenous peers um and to me that was one of the biggest things um was being able to be around those people and to learn from those people and i'm just gonna take a really quick peek at the questions again <laughs> um yeah just to reiterate honestly simon said it really well even the first day was really 
eye-opening and we were able to look at so many different aspects like food and linguistics um an archetype like um the uh, archetype is not the right word the uh hieroglyph archaeology that not is the word <laughs> so we we're able to look at so much of the archaeology and the program itself is so well-rounded to look at all these different aspects of culture that it was really eye-opening and interesting and to be able to compare and to share our knowledge um, with the people that were there to teach us was really um, an amazing experience. We were able to meet with the Governor General of Canada via Zoom and then the Governor General of Belize in person, which was a really amazing experience. So I would encourage all students to apply. It was a really, really rewarding experience. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, thank you, not Chelsea. <laughs> thank you, Isabella. I was looking at Chelsea on the screen. Thanks, Isabella. That's really, really great to hear that. Um, yeah, we had 11 students participate in the program just for everyone on the call, students. Yeah, we had 11 students participate last year. It was a bit of a smaller group than anticipated, but because of COVID um, and Omicron, and um, it was, yeah, it put it kind of, uh, yeah, it was, we weren't quite sure if it was going to run. So it last year was obviously at the launch, but it also was impacted by um, the COVID and pandemic. So there were lots of hiccups and things along the way. Um, but I think we'll get into the program details. And so um, just if that's okay with everyone, yeah, moving on. It is um, a two week, it's meant to be a two week immersive education abroad experience in early May. Um, and it's uh, it, it, we're looking to kind of put together a group of 20 Indigenous students from the four Maple Leaf schools. So I think for this year, we're hoping that five, uh, five Indigenous students from each of the four universities uh, will make up a, the group of 20. Um, including and then in addition, we'll have hopefully two, uh, one a faculty ad, uh, advisor supervisor as well as an indigenous support staff from one of, from the maple league one of our schools um we are uh yeah as mentioned um earlier um uh the program really move the you move around belize and so we it's not in one location uh, so you arrive in belize city and then um, you we, you move around to different parts. And as mentioned earlier, um, there are four uh, main indigenous groups in in Belize: the uh, Yucatec, the Mopa, and the uh, Gar uh, the Garifuna. <laughs> I think that's a slight typo. And the uh, Kichi people of Belize. Um, so it's really uh, very immersive and very. Um, uh, yeah, day, every day is very different, um, and and your and students are traveling, or the group is traveling from one location to the another, um, not daily, but um, you're you're in a, uh, one location for a couple of days, and then you move on. Um, it's not actually in class teaching at Galen University. Um, you will it is will be with a faculty member from Galen um, on the ground, um, but we uh, because of um, Galen, you know Belize is a very small country, um, but it's there's a lot. Uh, it's very culturally rich, and so we do move around. Um, so there will be some days I think where you will use facilities and will learn in. Kind of classrooms or in rooms but we don't we won't be the group doesn't is not based at galen university um as mentioned uh, simon and isabella there's um visits to culturally re relevant sites and organizations um and you meet with lots of guest speakers lots of um people that can can speak to um belize um belize culture and and uh and important issues in belize um, yeah, a lot of community engagement and intercultural relations. I think um, Galen University has so many ties and so many, uh, you know, very deep relationships. Um, and, and so there's a uh, every day, again, you'll, you'll be meeting people. And as Isabella said, sharing um, Indigenous culture, Indigenous knowing and having those conversations. So it really does allow uh, participants to share and reflect on their own Indigenous experience. 
I will mention maybe um, it's in the next slide, I'm not sure. But uh, at the beginning, um, before everyone leaves, we will have a two day or three day pre-departure gathering. So that will be uh, um, on one of our campuses, likely Mount Allison campus, but details will still be sorted. Uh, but that will mean that everybody comes together to, um, yeah, to meet before they travel to Belize. Um, and so um, cultural kind of some, yeah, culture sharing and some cultural activities will happen um, in those days. And also lots of sort of pre-departure, um, uh, pre-departure preparations and a pre-departure orientation um, will happen before. And then everyone travels from uh, this at the same time to Belize. Is there another slide, Nate? But part of the program? No, we'll be moving on to the next slide is for the application eligibility and uh, selection. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I might just add then that likely everyone will travel at the same time, like all of the participants uh, will come from the their various campuses to yeah, I, I think to Mount Allison campus uh, together, I think it's May 3rd, um, May 3rd to May 5th, they'll be at the pre-departure gathering. And so you um, will all travel with staff and other students from your home universities to Mount Allison. And then you would fly from uh, Moncton is our, um, for those of you not familiar with Mount Allison's location, uh, you fly from Moncton um, and fly together from, I think it goes Moncton to um, Toronto, Toronto to Houston, Texas, and Houston down to Belize. We do um, have, um, Mike will cover some more next steps and touch upon some of these details as well. Um, yeah, thanks. Super, I'll pass things over then. Great. Um, then I'll move on. We've got our next uh, portion, which I'll uh, introduce, which is eligibility, application, and selection. So this is about, you know, who can apply, and how we select the participants and that process. So in order to be considered for this opportunity to go to Belize, um, you need to identify, or we consider students to identify as indigenous. Um, the cohort this year will be comprised of indigenous students from the former I believe universities. You also uh, will also be considering only students who are Canadian citizens. Um, the students that apply will need to have completed at least one term of studies at their home university, and they need to be in good academic standing at the end of the 2022 fall term. Applicants should be really interested in, you know, going abroad and having an international experience and adding an international component to your degree. This is what this program is really, really cool for is, you know, internationalizing, not only, you know, having this experience, but internationalizing your degree and adding that to your resume. It's like an experience that you can um, use to promote yourself in your future um, academic and um, professional opportunities. <clears throat> Applicants should also be really interested in sharing their own Indigenous culture, their teachings and ceremony with other, other participants in the program. And you should be open to learning from other participants as well from their own Indigenous cultures, teachings and ceremonies. You're also going to be representing your home country, your community, and um, your university. So please keep that in mind while you're going through the application process and going abroad and um, thinking about how that might impact um, what you do and um, so on. So with all that being said, that's what to consider when you're applying. I'm going to hand things over to Mike. He's going to cover the next steps and you know how to apply. Um, Robin touched on some of, the th some of these things, dates, pre-departure orientation. Um, Mike's got the details in the following slide. Thank you, Nate. Um, so you can see next steps here. The You can find full details about the field school, about the program itself. There's a URL there. It's on the Maple League website. So it's the nation to nation link that's uh, available there. Um, have a read through that. The application will be, um, will be live on December 1st and will be open until January the 6th. So you have that period of time during the break when you can 
consider your options, look at the program, speak with your family or uh, other um, um, friends and community members about this opportunity, decide if it's something that you're interested in and wanna do. At the very least, you can submit your application. Um, we'll be doing uh, interviews, a selection process, and then the interview period between January the 9th to the 20th. So for the next couple of weeks, following the application closure, um, we'll review the applications. We'll make an announcement regarding selections. So contact everybody to let them know um, whether you've been successful, an applicant to the program. Uh, we're, we're planning on potentially having an online meet and greet for the participants. Um, uh, we discussed having that possibly in February. So that's not, um, we haven't set that yet, but that's something we'd like to do um, in preparation for our actual in-person pre-departure gathering. And this is what Robin had already alluded to. It's, uh, we held it at Mount Allison last year. And um, so it's, it's possible that we may do that again. It was quite successful. That'll be at the beginning of May. Everybody will get together. So that's all the program participants, all the students, the um, program coordinators and managers, um, also the faculty supervisor and the Indigenous support staff. So everybody will be there to take part in the pre-departure orientation session. So we'll, at that point, we'll have um, preparatory workshops, um, activities, and it's just a good opportunity for everybody to get together, get to know one another, um, socialize a little bit. And then the next day, early the next day, Saturday, May the 6th, everybody would then um, board plane and travel together uh, on their way down to Belize. So that's generally next steps. That's a, a general timeline, what we're looking at. There's a QR code there. It's not active right now because the application's not active yet. Um, however, we are recording this session. And then once the application is live, you'll be able to access the application directly from the QR code at that point. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to make the session available once it's recorded. Do we have a destination for that, a plan for that? Uh, the Maple League YouTube. Okay, perfect. So it'll be available again through the Maple League, uh, Maple League YouTube, as Lauren has just indicated there. But regardless, the applications will be available. We'll make sure that everybody has access to the applications. Um, we'll be in communication with our students at each school and Obviously, you can access information through the Maple Leaf website there. So that's basically it. That's the timeline. That's what we're looking at. And then May 6th to May 20th is the actual field school in Belize. Does anybody have any questions about any of that? Um, I did quickly. Sure. Um, our school already put out applications. Is this a separate thing to that? Are, are you are you from um, bishops yes yes I th so mm -hmm. nick did mention that there were that they they had started a slightly separate process if it's the application for the belize field school um i think so but yeah I so for the bishop students that have already applied you don't have to resubmit this application this is just a new centralized form for all of the maple league universities where we used to have them separate so if you've already applied that's good we'll use your application as it is yeah we all okay, had, so last much. year we used individual applications so bishop started off with that one and we've since centralized it but it's the same application Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, sorry, Mike. Okay. Any questions about uh, next steps or applying? Okay. Um, we'll move on to the next section then. Uh, we're going to go on to uh, the proposed itinerary for uh, this upcoming Belize Field School. Thanks, Mike, for um, that section. Robin, have we got someone to cover this? Um, if not, I'm happy to go on. Okay. Uh, no, I think it's, I mean, I'm happy to do it. And um, I think this, so the, we, yeah, we're working with our partner university in G Galen University in Belize to come up with an itinerary. So they did send us a draft itinerary. Um, so these would be some of the highlights that would have, that you would 
visit and things that you would do over the course of the the two weeks um so and as simon and isabella both mentioned it's really cross-disciplinary so there's um it's very um there's yeah lots of different um experiences and so food is a bit, obviously food um but also you're visiting archaeological sites i think um, they're planning for two different archaeological site visits um as they mentioned um learning about the significance of ceramics and the importance of ceramics and corn in my culture um the hieroglyphs are very um are are incredibly old mayan um uh um artifacts um also important in in Belizean culture um last year the students got to meet the governor general who's a um a Mopin Mayan um indigenous woman um so I think they're trying to organize to for, for this group as well to meet the governor general of Belize um uh, the visit to the coxcomb basin forest reserve hmm i don't um, i think that's a new one this year that might be a yeah. new one i was gonna say i don't reckon remember that i don't know isabella do you, does that sound familiar to you no it doesn't <laughs> okay must be a new and i'm not even sure where in uh, belize that would be but looks like a new addition um to the to the proposed itinerary um but visiting the cacao's the uh cacao factory and the cacao's growers association um learning about reclaiming uh cacao and uh, the chocolate industry um and then uh there's also a couple of days um in hopkins which is on the coast of belize um for learning about um the reef the barrier reef um and uh, an opportunity to uh swim and snorkel as you can well imagine it's hot there yeah. so you will enjoy the opportunity to swim whether you swim or snorkel just to get in the water will be awesome yeah I think the students when they arrived there it was a heat wave and Isabella and Tarina if you're on the call I think it was um 40 about 45 degrees when when the group arrived here so there is a significant um temperature difference and 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 climate um climate difference um upon arrival in May mm -hmm. Um, that's a good point, Mike and Robin, because there will be some walking and maybe some light hiking involved in hot temperatures. So a moderate level of fitness is uh, a consideration to keep in mind when applying to uh, this program. Super. So we'll have the proposed, we'll have a confirmed itinerary a little bit later on, um, but those are some highlights um, and um based on um feedback from last year i think there will be um several kind of outings or, or um yeah, visits um per day but there will be a lot of time built in for reflection um talking circles and really important just kind of some downtime to to kind of um both acclimatize and adjust to belize but also to to take it all in because there's so much learning um, and so many really amazing opportunities and activities um, that the group uh, will get to experience. And through the um, Maple League website on the uh, on this uh, page, we've got the full proposed itinerary available if you're curious at looking at a uh, more detailed day to day uh, draft itinerary. Mm -hmm. I see Lauren posted the URL in the chat there as well for the uh, site on the Maple Leaf website. Super. So with all of this information being said, I'd like to move on to um, a question period. Um, we have Isabella with us still, who is a past participant, and we have some Maple Leaf staff with us who are happy to answer questions. So please, if you're curious or interested or nervous about applying, please don't hesitate at all. Um, we're happy to answer any and all questions. Uh, at this time, if you'd prefer to send an email later, that's also welcome, but uh, 
I think it's a good opportunity now to uh, to ask some questions.